second. Second. Terence Crawford has earned his place as one of the sport's top pound for pound fighters. We all still remember his knockout victory against Sean Porter, especially after hearing he was trailing on the ESPN scorecard. And the short uppercut that we showed. And the body punch is 28. There is the knockdown scored in round And who could forget his dominant performance against Errol Spence Jr., which crowned him the undisputed welterweight champion? However, not all pros think Madrimov will be a walkover win. So when you beat the pound for pound number one, are you pound for pound number one? You know, as we said, Madrimov already world champion, huge star in Uzbekistan. People know about him in the States. Well, Crawford is now 36, and in just days he faces a new challenge. Moving up in weight to fight Israel Madrimov, the unbeaten World Boxing Association junior middleweight champion from Uzbekistan. Madrimov, with a record of 10-0-1 and 7 knockouts, is confident in his abilities, declaring, This is my division. However, one voice that has been at the top of this is Teofimo Lopez. Lopez, known for his confidence and ambition, believes that Crawford will come out victorious against Madrimov. He sees this as a big moment in Crawford's career, potentially setting the stage for even bigger fights in the future. Madrimov might be strong, but I see Bud coming out with the win. He's more skilled, got more experience. Power doesn't beat experience. Lopez, who currently holds a record of 20 wins and one loss with 13 knockouts, has expressed a strong desire to face Crawford himself. He is open to the idea of moving up to 147 pounds, while Crawford would have to drop back down from 154 pounds to meet in a catchweight bout. Lopez's goal is clear. He wants to become a three-time lineal champion, and facing Crawford would be a significant step toward that achievement. Check up this world twice. It's to the point that they can't even give me Crawford. I'm like, yo, give me Crawford so make I can it make it thrice. Mm. Yeah. You know, I need that thrice. Come on. <laughs> Come on now. Like, you know, he can say all this and that. However, Lopez also acknowledges that Crawford's focus might be elsewhere. The 36-year-old Crawford, boasting an impressive 40, zero record with 31 knockouts, has been eyeing a super fight against Canelo Alvarez, the undisputed super middleweight champion. This matchup would not only offer Crawford a substantial payday, but also elevate his legacy within the sport. As Lopez put it, Crawford isn't stupid when it comes to that. Canelo is a little bit on his way out, but that's a cash cow moment right there. Two more weight classes, but Crawford ain't stupid, you know what I'm saying, when it comes to that. Canelo is a little bit on his way out, but that's a cash cow moment right there. Yeah. You're about to get Lopez believes that Crawford is strategically positioning himself for this blockbuster fight with Canelo, which could potentially be his last major bout before retiring. He speculates that Crawford, who turns 37 in September, a relatively advanced age for a professional boxer, is looking for one final massive payday to cap off his illustrious career. Lopez's comments suggest that Crawford's decision-making is driven by financial and legacy considerations rather than the competitive challenge posed by younger fighters like himself or Jaron Boots Ennis. So, so I'd just rather go after the guy that's too much of an ego, and that's Terrence Crawford. And, and he, he seems to be chasing after Canelo right now. Despite this, Lopez remains eager to challenge Crawford, expressing frustration that such a matchup seems unlikely in the near future. He sees Crawford's reluctance to fight younger, potentially more dangerous opponents as a tactical move to protect his record and set up the Canelo fight. Lopez said, it's to the point that they can't even give me Crawford. I'm like, yo, give me Crawford so I can make it thrice. Well, Teo is not the only one siding on Crawford in this one. Virgil Ortiz's corner has also confidently predicted that Terence Crawford will decisively defeat Israel Madrimov in their upcoming bout. The reason why I say Crawford's gonna get him. 
I never said, I just said, you know what, Crawford's just a different, but it's that, and I've, I've been in a ring with him, and Crawford's gonna get him in like less than seven. Ortiz, known for his assertive opinions and strong performances in the ring, believes Crawford will secure a knockout victory within seven rounds. His confidence stems from his personal experience sparring with Madrimov, where Ortiz felt he clearly dominated. Even Ortiz's trainer, Robert Garcia, supports this view, emphasizing that Ortiz handled Madrimov easily during their sparring sessions. Garcia, speaking to S News, noted that Madrimov appeared to be around 180 pounds during their sparring, suggesting that Ortiz's performance was even more impressive given the size difference. Uh, you know, normally like, we don't respond to that stuff at all, but I mean, like, why lie to us? Like, 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 look, I haven't even talked Robert. to Robert about it. The sparring session between Ortiz and Madrimov has sparked some controversy, mainly due to comments made by Madrimov in a recent interview. According to Ortiz, Madrimov downplayed the significance of their sparring, claiming he was just playing around. This assertion did not sit well with Ortiz, who insists that he was in control throughout their time in the ring. The perceived slight has led to a bit of tension between the two fighters, with Ortiz feeling the need to set the record straight. Garcia also commented on the situation, questioning the importance of winning in sparring and pointing out that it's unusual for fighters to brag about such things. Okay, now finish the story, the other half. Because on you see on the video that he played that came here to amateur Soviet play with Virgil. It's like Despite this, Garcia sees value in Ortiz speaking out, as it helps generate interest in his career and his upcoming fights. However, inasmuch as Ortiz is siding with Crawford here, there may be some hidden two things we can mention. Firstly, Criticizing Madrimov keeps Ortiz in the public eye, particularly as he prepares for his next fight against WBC interim junior middleweight champion Serhai Bohachuk. The fight, unfortunately, hasn't garnered much attention, partly due to Ortiz's recent inactivity and health issues that have kept him out of the ring. Robert, Robert, tell me Robert. Don't lie, Robert. Be, even if, it's, if, it, if, if, it, if Virgil got whooped or not, be honest. No, Robert's very what, honest. What happened with Virgil and Madrimov? Ortiz's decision to talk about his experiences with Madrimov might be seen as a strategic move to boost interest in his career. However, Garcia expressed hope that this wouldn't become a recurring tactic for Ortiz, relying on sparring stories to maintain his public profile. Instead, Garcia envisions a more substantive career path for Ortiz, potentially leading to significant bouts against high-profile opponents like Crawford. Keyshawn Davis, a promising talent in the boxing world, was also not left behind on the line of comments. Shit, I'm great, man. Uh, I had to pop up on my boy today. He don't even know I'm out here yet. <laughs> I just saw my coaches. I just popped up on me. Nobody knew I was coming out here, so just out here supporting my boy. Davis confidently predicts that Crawford will emerge victorious in this fight, further enhancing his reputation and possibly setting the stage for a future showdown with Canelo Alvarez. Davis expressed his belief that a strong performance by Crawford against Madrimov, who is the current WBA junior middleweight champion, could make a fight with Canelo almost inevitable. He stated, I think they will fight, especially after Crawford looks good against his opponent Madrimov right here. Davis sees this potential matchup as a logical next step, especially given the interest and stakes involved. Crawford is a dangerous boy. Yeah. I believe in any weight class. So what are we expecting from Crawford facing Madrimov? Come uh, August third. Um, potentially, man. He, just just because like he's the smaller fighter coming in this fight, like for sure. However, Davis also acknowledged that defeating Madrimov at 154 pounds doesn't automatically qualify Crawford for a shot at Canelo, who fights at 168 pounds. Davis emphasized that while a win over Madrimov would be massive, it doesn't justify skipping over the middleweight division entirely to challenge Canelo. This sentiment reflects a broader understanding that Crawford, despite his skills and accomplishments, still has more to prove in the higher weight classes. Keyshawn added that Crawford, despite being smaller than Canelo, has the skills and IQ to make the fight competitive. The camp, like, he ain't really switched nothing up. In terms of the gameplay, he always gameplay for different fighters, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But he ain't really switched nothing up, you know what I'm saying? Terrence always coming to, coming to fight ready, you know, condition-wise and physical. Mm -hmm. He stated, it's obvious that Canelo has the size advantage, but size doesn't mean everything in a fight. You have to bring more than just size, power, and speed. You have to bring a lot of things to the table when it comes to a fight. Davis continued and expressed optimism about Crawford's chances against Madrimov, predicting a possible knockout. He mentioned, 
I think Crawford can knock out Canelo for sure, and if he does that, it's going to be crazy. Davis highlighted Crawford's ability to adapt and strategize in the ring, which he believes will be crucial in overcoming Madrimov's physicality and skill. He noted that Crawford's experience and ring IQ would allow him to navigate the challenges posed by Madrimov, who Davis described as a young, hungry lion with a strong fighting IQ. It is, um, provided he wins, I know you're rooting for him. He's definitely going to win. Mm -hmm. It's just going to be a tough fight. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, you can make tough fights easy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So. Despite his confidence in Crawford, Davis also acknowledged the uncertainties surrounding Crawford's performance at a new weight class, especially considering his age and recent inactivity. He pointed out that Crawford, now 36, has been out of the ring for 13 months and will face challenges against a well-prepared and powerful opponent like Madrimov. Davis hinted that Crawford might adopt a more cautious approach, focusing on outboxing Madrimov rather than engaging in a brawl to mitigate the risks posed by Madrimov's power and size. And if we're being honest, this is something we've thought of too. Advantage there? For Canelo, Canelo yeah. I, mean, I mean, it's obvious he got the size advantage, you know what I'm saying? But Size don't mean everything in the fight. Yeah. <laughs> like size really don't mean everything in the fight. But while most expect Crawford to go home with the win, Eddie Hearn's take is different. Hearn regards Madrimov as the toughest test in Crawford's career, particularly as Crawford moves up to the 154 pound division. He stated, Israel Madrimov is the toughest test of Crawford's career up at 154 pounds. He's a huge light middleweight, punches very hard, has tremendous movement, has good boxing IQ, and has an outstanding amateur pedigree as well. This is a real, real fight. Of his career, up at 154 pounds. He's a huge light middleweight, super welterweight, punches very, very hard, has tremendous movement, good boxing IQ, outstanding amateur pedigree as well. This is a real, real fight, and we like our spot in this fight, overlooked. Hearn touched on the formidable qualities of Madrimov, including his power, movement, and boxing intelligence, which he believes could present significant challenges for Crawford. According to Hearn, Madrimov possesses a level of skill and power that could have easily led to a flawless record if he had faced Crawford's previous opponents. He commented on the strength of Madrimov's amateur background and his readiness to prove himself on the big stage, stating, We like our spot in this fight. Overlooked, the underdog, but with Uzbek power, and he's ready to knock Terence Crawford out in Los Angeles? Despite Madrimov being labeled as an underdog, Hearn believes that the Uzbek fighter is far from a pushover. A dog. Someone that is very comfortable and confident in that ring, believes in himself, believes that victory is upon him. Great team of people as well, and a whole country behind him. I mean, every time Israel Madrimov goes home, he's already like, he's like a prince. He acknowledged the perception among casual boxing fans who may overlook Madrimov's threat level, but pointed out that those deeply familiar with the sport recognize the danger he poses to Crawford. Hearn described Madrimov as a live underdog who is confident, well-prepared, and supported by a strong team and his nation. He emphasized the importance of Madrimov's attributes, such as his movement, angles, and power, which will be crucial in the fight against Crawford. Hearn also touched on the broader implications of this fight for Madrimov's career and national pride. But this is going to turn him into the king in Uzbekistan, and the whole country is behind him, ready for August 3rd. Speaking of Uzbekistan, that promo did sort of hark back to what he came through in both fighters and the struggles they've been through in terms of how Madrimov's life would change. He suggested that a victory over Crawford could elevate Madrimov's status from a beloved figure in Uzbekistan to a global boxing superstar. He stated every time Madrimov goes home, he's like a prince, but this is going to turn him into a king in Uzbekistan and the whole country is behind him, ready for August 3rd. This is the one that makes him global. This is the fight that turns Israel Madrimov into a superstar. So when you beat the pound for pound number one, are you pound for pound number one? You know, as we said, Madrimov, already world champion, huge star in Uzbekistan. People know about him in the States. Pauli Malignaghi, a former boxer and commentator for ProBox TV, also went on to highlight Crawford's impressive versatility, noting his ability to switch seamlessly between southpaw and orthodox stances. Malignaghi praised Crawford, calling him the best fighter in the world right now. However, he also acknowledged that age could be a concern, as it often is for athletes nearing the end of their careers. While Malignaghi remains confident in Crawford's abilities, he hinted at the uncertainty that comes with aging in the sport, suggesting that there might come a day when Crawford doesn't perform at his peak level. I was at a high level. All those guys were...
possible, they might even be Hall of Famers, all of them, I think. You know, as far as, as, far as all the different styles against Hall of Fame level talent and beat them all. He showed he could adjust and he could adapt to all those styles. This acknowledgement of Crawford's age is not meant to undermine his skills, but rather to underscore the challenges of maintaining top performance over time. As Crawford prepares to face Madrimov, questions arise about whether he can continue to dominate the ring or if his age will finally catch up with him. Madrimov is no ordinary opponent. He is a physically strong and athletic fighter who exudes confidence, often stating that the junior middleweight division is his territory. Madrimov's background includes training with Dmitry Bivol, who famously defeated Canelo Alvarez in 2022. This connection gives Madrimov a unique insight and preparation level that could prove advantageous against Crawford. Chris Algieri, a former 140-pound champion, emphasized the importance of gym culture in Madrimov's training regimen. Algieri noted that while Madrimov might appear to be over his head in this matchup, he possesses the right mindset and preparation to present a significant challenge to Crawford. He described Madrimov as a genuine threat, even to a fighter of Crawford's caliber. The bout between Crawford and Madrimov is set to headline a highly anticipated event at the LAFC Soccer Stadium in Los Angeles. The event, promoted by Riyadh Season, also features a lineup of exciting fights, including Isaac Pitbull Cruz, defending his 140-pound belt, former heavyweight champion Andy Ruiz Jr. facing Gerald Big Baby Miller, and appearances by talented contenders Jared Anderson, David Morrell, and Andy Cruz. Timothy Bradley Jr., a Hall of Fame former two-division champion, shared his thoughts on the matchup. Bradley, who has a history with Madrimov's trainer, Joel Diaz, offered a critical view of Madrimov's fighting style. He noted that Madrimov tends to get reckless, which could be a significant disadvantage against a fighter as calculated and skilled as Crawford. Bradley emphasized that Madrimov's best chance of success lies in landing significant blows early in the fight, during a period when Crawford typically assesses his opponent's strategy. In between all these picks, Israel Madrimov posted videos of himself training in the gym. Fans have keenly noted these attributes, especially after a gym photo of Madrimov circulated on social media, earning him the nickname, The Incredible Hulk. The image sparked varied reactions, with some fans suggesting that Madrimov's size and strength could pose a real threat to Crawford. Comments like massive, he's gonna beat Crawford, and it's over if he hits him, reflect a belief in Madrimov's potential to overpower the more experienced champion. Conversely, other fans and analysts point out that Madrimov's muscular frame might be a double-edged sword. Some argue that his size could lead to slower punches, making it easier for Crawford to exploit openings. One fan remarked, his punches are too slow and wide to trouble Bud, referring to Crawford's nickname. Another concern is Madrimov's stamina, with speculations that his bulk could cause him to tire quickly, especially against an elite fighter like Crawford, who is known for capitalizing on his opponent's mistakes from both orthodox and southpaw stances. Crawford, a seasoned veteran, is likely aware of these potential weaknesses. His ability to switch stances and adapt mid-fight has been a hallmark of his career, allowing him to exploit defensive lapses and capitalize on moments when his opponents drop their guard. Madrimov's tendency to leap in and lower his guard, as seen in his title-winning effort, could be a vulnerability Crawford aims to exploit. However, even with all this, coach Brian Bomack McIntyre is confident in Terence Bud Crawford's ability to seamlessly transition from 147 pounds to 154 pounds. McIntyre, speaking to Fight Hub, downplayed the challenge of moving up in weight. It's no challenge. Terence was growing out of 147. His body's developing more now. He's developing more power, so it's not like holding him back no more that he's got to stay at a certain weight. McIntyre explained. Now it's just letting him go. Let him go and do his thing. So, uh, strong, smooth, this born in there with these young guys, Troy, Barn uh, Steven Nelson, man, yeah. uh, heavier guys. <laughs> Crawford has been working with two strength trainers, and McIntyre has noticed significant improvements in his fighter. I would say that he's improved more, McIntyre continued. Speed, power, 
Like I say, at 147, he was growing out of it. He had to keep his body at a certain weight. But now at 54, he's able to do the things he wants to do. I think the transition is going well, and you'll see it when they fight. Despite Crawford's confidence, McIntyre is mindful of Madrimov's abilities. The undefeated champion, with a record of 10-0-1, including seven knockouts, has a wealth of amateur experience and has faced high-level competition as a professional. Seeing Madrimov and just watching him, I believe he's going to bring a good performance out of Terence because the kid looks like he's determined, McIntyre noted. So he brings a lot to the table for Terence to work with. I, I look for Bud to have one of those performances when people walk away say. Regarding a potential rematch with Errol Spence, whom Crawford decisively defeated last July, McIntyre expressed doubt about its likelihood, suggesting that if Spence wanted the rematch, he would have pursued it at 147 pounds. The possibility of a future bout with Canelo Alvarez, who has competed as high as 175 pounds, was also discussed. McIntyre revealed that Crawford has experienced sparring with larger fighters, including heavyweight contender Bryant Jennings. Y'all can look at it like that, but Bud's always been sparring bigger guys, he said. Has the Canelo fight, you know, realistically left your mind once he said he's not interested? Or are you st no, are you still not, pursuing it? Not, not at all. You know, I think uh, business talk, you know, with the right. Uh While McIntyre emphasized that Crawford's current focus is on the upcoming fight with Madrimov, he expressed confidence in Crawford's ability to face Canelo in a cross-division super fight. I just look at Canelo in that he can be beaten, McIntyre stated. He's been beat before, so Bud's definitely got the tools to beat him. That's how I look at it. I know Bud has the tools to beat him. That's the most important thing to me. McIntyre acknowledged the challenge such a fight would pose, both for Crawford and the entire team, but sees it as an opportunity for greatness. Is it a challenge for him? Yeah, of course. Is it a challenge for the whole team? Yeah, of course. That's something we're in the business for, being great. What? Yeah, yeah. So you got Canelo winning then, right? Then definitely. If he fighting at 168, definitely. Well, what do you think? Share your thoughts in the comment section below and don't forget to like and subscribe for more updates. See you in the next one.